G'day, I've been busy today. As usual, I've been running around, troubleshooting a whole bunch of different stuff. Like I often do, forgotten to take the GoPro with me. So there's a bunch of adventures that I've been having today that I can't share with you. I have been busy working on a project which I can share. Now, I've done a few videos using SolidWorks and Onshape. I don't know if I've uploaded any Fusion 360 videos to this channel, but I do use Fusion and I've made videos about that in the past. My recent project is this. So I was prototyping this. This is my first prototype and this is my second prototype. By the time I got to the second prototype, I actually got this working. What this is, is a reversible air valve. So up here on the top, I have the actuator tube. That's going to connect to a little pneumatic actuator. And then down here, I have a pressure port, a vacuum port, and then in the center, a exhaust slash inlet port. It allows me to switch between pressure and vacuum on the hydraulic actuator. Despite the porosity of FDM 3D prints and also the fairly generous tolerances that I've had to design into it to be able to make everything turn the way I want it to, the valve does seem to be working when I connect it up to the compressor with a very low pressure, of course. Anyway, because I've made a lot of CAD content before, and I think a lot of people find that CAD construction process to be a bit tedious to watch. So I've saved you the trouble of having to watch me completely build my model today. What I'm going to do is share with you the finished product. Over here I have about 9 or 10 of these valves printing. After making two iterations and getting the second one working, I've decided to go ahead with production. And these valves are going to be used in my classroom to help students understand pneumatic and hydraulic systems. So what I'll do is I'll share with you the 3D model, how I made it. The first thing I attacked with this project was the valve body, just a simple 30 millimeter square. It's 15 millimeters deep and I've got my three ports for the supply side. So once again, this one here is going to supply the pressure. This one here is the exhaust slash inlet. And this one here is the vacuum. Over here I have my outlet. This is going to connect directly to my actuator. This will have the reversed signals. Pretty much a simple model. Four holes here for me to screw a cap on it. A socket here for the valve body to go into and then four ports, which you can see in there. Over here, I've got the valve core. This consists simply of a cylinder shape attached to a spigot, which you can then use to rotate the valve core, and two orifices, which have been placed carefully to line up with those ports on the valve body. Lastly, a very simple valve cap which you can see just closes off the entire system and can be screwed down. I aimed for an M3 screw from memory. This is the assembly all together. And if I view that from the top, you can see how the uh, valve actually works. So over here, I've got my outlet and then I've got my pressure port here my vacuum port here. When the valve core is rotated to this position, the pressure port lines up with the orifice in the valve core, and then that lines up with the outlet here. And when I rotate towards this screw, the vacuum side of the valve body 
is then exposed to the orifice in the valve core which connects to the actuator. Of course the other port in the valve core allows for in this case the air pressure to be exhausted out through that center port and in the pressure position it allows for inlet air to come in through this port and then back into the pump. So I'm hoping that this is going to work. I'm quite excited about this project. I think that students are going to have a lot of fun making little pneumatic actuators move. The last piece of this puzzle is to build a little bell crank that I can slot onto this spigot and that will allow the valve to be controlled by a servo motor. So we'll have full control of a pneumatic system with a pump connected to a relay that'll come over here somewhere and be able to control the valve core with a servo motor. That's the project I've been working on today alongside of troubleshooting network issues and crawling down cavities that are far too small for me to be crawling down. You couldn't pay me to do that, but for the sake of my own home and family, willing to go a little bit above and beyond my normal duties. This is the first time I have printed multiple items all together using up a large amount of the bed on this Ender 3, I think it is, which I did create a first impressions video of. You can see that here, if I can remember to place a link in the video there. So far, this looks to be producing a pretty good print. I'll be sure to share with you how well all of these pieces come off. Fluid power is a huge thing in industry virtually anywhere you want to move something there's going to be some sort of fluid power involved that's the motivation behind me setting up these little pneumatic kits i really want my students to be able to learn about fluid power in the most practical and hands-on way possible there's heaps of online simulators and plenty of theory and stuff like that that you can bore them to death with i think that most students are going to engage better if they can actually pick up stuff and make it work. I couldn't find any tiny little four-way valves that weren't frightfully expensive, so I decided to make it myself. Hopefully it works out for me and the effort pays off. Not one of these prints came off the platform. They've all adhered. Mind you, there does look to be a little bit of warpage here on this one. I'm going to take the whole thing off now. This is part of a much bigger project. I'll be sure to share with you the progress I make with my fluid power classroom demonstration slash experiment kit that I'm trying to put together. Until then, see you later.